What's up? What are we doing today? We're completely deep cleaning this mechanic shop. It is a disaster. It's like no room to walk, no room to do anything because everything's everywhere. Yeah, we've been really busy. Usually we keep everything cleaned, put away, but we let it get away from us. So we and Hilda are gonna just go through everything, putting the tools back where they go. Get it back then... under control. Yeah. All right, we're getting back to work on the Bronk Shining Star. <laughs> what we need to do in order to get to King of Hammers is we gotta recombobulate these uppers so that is the task we have today. What we need to do is we're gonna set the front of the bronc turd on these, and we're gonna let it suspend. We're gonna remove these arms, get them out of the way, do some super sketchy stuff, cut these arms off one at a time and recombobulate them at 20. <gasps> Bombi! What are you doing in there? What are you doing? Come here. Don't be, don't be shy. Come here. Look at all sorts of noises. Come here, kitty, kitty, kitty. Bud. Bombie's hanging out under, under whiskers. But anyway, so we're gonna reset these at 20 degrees, coming out onto the rock sliders. Um, and then we gotta put the tire on and make sure it doesn't hit. We got a few things to do. We'll undo this, we'll do that, we'll do this, we'll do that, and then we'll do this. Then we'll do some more of that. But my painter just went home sick. So I'm gonna be in the booth and out here. A lot of noise there's so much noise all the noises so we've got a lot of things to do so you're gonna be bouncing around with us but we're gonna get this all taken care of time to do some sketchy stuff Doo -dah. look at how much weight just went on the rear struts that is crazy they're still going down now you're starting okay. to relieve all right Let me, but i gotta get the lock. all right no 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 leave that one there huh? leave this one oh yeah one Four. at a time for safety purposes, because we're all about safety here, this is gonna stay right here. See how that front axle moves? And the whole entire bronc turd moves? It's got safeties. So we'll start by removing this, sweet girl. So we're gonna position this arm to where it's still under the frame. Let's loosen these up so we can get the pressure off. We'll take this out, we'll cut the bolts, or I mean, we'll cut the brackets, and then we will get our angle finder and we will put it at 20 degrees. First bolt to start this removal process, or relocating process. I'm gonna go through and cut the zip ties that are holding the brake line down, because we gotta get the brake line moved out of the way, so when they go welding, it doesn't melt anything. expertly removed. So now I'll get the plasma cutter. Don't say hi. You can't be coming in and not saying hi to everyone. You like to see how you're doing. It's okay. We're friends. There you go. There you go, buddy. And we have confirmed it. Bombi is a boy. Yeah! I'm a boy. Okay, so I'm gonna get this one cut first. Okay, so Hillbilly's got that upper bracket cut off. He's gotta cut this lower, well, it's the back side of the upper bracket, whatever you wanna call it. We're gonna get that cut. And then right here, I have my angle finder set at 20 degrees. You put your 45 here. So if that's 45, 45, boom, bada, boom, boom, boom. We're 20 right there. That's that. Hopefully that makes sense to all y'all. Yeah, it makes sense to me. Which will come this way, and it will make it to where this axle can't go. Dun, 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 dun. That is a nice helmet, Darth. Can you see me? Hey, maybe when we're driving Luke, in the bright sun. I am your father. I'll use this for my sunglasses because there's no is that blockage. That's five. I'm gonna ask. I'm gonna have to ask Miller for a couple more of those. There's no blockage. That is so sweet. No blind spots. Bam! Okay, we gotta not move. Look at how much that moves. It was our very first one to ever do. That's true. Easy, easy. No. Easy. So we're gonna have Hillbilly clean the top of this up real quick. And then. And then, and then, and then, and then. Then we're gonna place it and see where it goes. And then while you do that, I will get the other bracket made. That's gonna be real good. That's real, real good. Look through it, man. It's so oh, cool. I love it. This is the greatest. It is so nice. You look like. Uh... <laughs> When they're white suits and they have that mask. Makes us older, better, faster, stronger. I don't even know what it is. <laughs> I don't know. 
We're gonna have some more grinding to do, but we wanna kind of fit it up. This is just a rough, a rough roof. Bombies like hit the road. Take it out. Whoa, oh, back. Put it up there. Is that gonna work? Right there. Well, that'll work, won't it? So we're gonna go somewhere like that. You gotta center this axle because it shifts. So we wanna make sure it's perfectly centered. Then we'll get that upper tacked. All right, so I'm gonna set my bob, my bob of plum up. So because I can't really get this back in there where I need it to be, which is directly above the axle, I'll just put it right here. Once I get this plumb bob centered, we will adjust the axle. It's 25 and a half. So Hillbilly's gonna pass the bar in. It's gonna be a process. So we are centered right there. I'm just gonna crouching tiger hidden dragon it. We're gonna set it where it needs to go. Right there is 20 degrees. If you guys remember way back in the day when we built these, these upper links are 75% of the length of the lowers. That way our pinion angle stays the same as it articulates. So we didn't extend this. We got about a half an inch of overhang. We're gonna build a little gusset, whatever, make that strong. But look at this. Barely, barely wiggles. Most that's in the But body. most of it, it just wiggles the body. It's so crazy to me how triangulation works, but it works. So what we gotta do now, before we go to weld town and really burn that in, Hillbilly is gonna put the tire up here. We're actually gonna start the Bronco and turn it and make sure that the tire doesn't rub here. So it's a big, big tire. Baseball. I like baseball. You wanna try throwing a hoop? I'll pass it to you. Eh, I'll pass. This is gonna take both of us. Come on. I don't feel like throwing my back out today. Voila! Ooh, it looks good with those tires. It looks normal. Cruising tires. But when they just move it around, yeah, it just doesn't do it for the Bronx seller. These. All right, so now that we've got the wheel on, we're gonna turn it, max the tire out, and then we're gonna actually use a chain along and we're gonna compress the strut and see if that bar hits the frame. I have a feeling we're gonna be moving this bar out to clear the frame. He's just gonna use the hydraulics to turn it. Don't run it too long, it gasses us out. Hey, cut it out. So I think it's gonna clear there. We're, we're probably gonna just leave that arm there. Um, we'll get working on the other side. We're gonna cut it off. Hillbilly's gonna build a bar here and we're gonna do the exact same to this side as we did to the other side. Thank you, cameraman. Yep. All right, so I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna build a bracket that comes over this and goes up and around to try to reinforce this bracket here. Really, we could have brought this out a mile and it would have worked, but I think we're gonna be just fine right here. Hercules, it's gonna work. Oh, like right there. You know what I mean? Because this is too far forward on the other one. So I think if we bring this forward, because you've got it right like that. Mm -hmm. But I think if you just give it that Either little that, bit. Change the angle in here and move there, this. There you go, my guy. There you have it. Okay, so that's what we wanted. So basically what I'm doing here is I'm gonna make me a perfect bracket and then, and then, and then, I think I need to cut this down a little bit. If you don't grind your cardboard, <laughs> are you even doing it right? Look at that, look at it. We'll be able to weld it. Lug nut hole punch is just about <laughs> working. No, it didn't. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and uh, adjust the hole. I can't show them that I screwed up. No. Don't let them know. Oh. Okay. Don't tell them. Colton, I won't say a word. All right, there we go. Are you are you bonding with Bombi? We busted him. No, I'm. Everybody, we trying just to remember. Bust, no, we busted you. Look at that. Anyways. Okay, so I got my marks on this two by three tubing. Go ahead and get it cut. Ooh. thing I like about this is where I use this, the cutoff wheel, makes super crisp lines and I can measure off of them. So in theory, this is gonna be perfect. But most importantly, we can't forget to turn on the fan. All right, 
right, so we're gonna play play a game of will it match my cardboard? Ready, set, go. Oh yeah? Oh yeah? How's that? Dang, Gina. Look at that. Look at it. Mine matches my cat drawing too. Let's test fit this. <gasps> oh, look at that. And what I did is I gave a little bit around everything so I can burn a weld in. So if you look in here, I've left a little bit of a gap there so I can weld through both. So if you can imagine, this is gonna get welded, bolted, strong, strong, strong. Yeah, I think that'll work. And I think that's the only bracket we need extra. It's just that one, cause that's not gonna allow that to go anywhere. That ain't going nowhere. What I wanna do is I wanna hurry and weld this and then I'm gonna grind it a little bit flat so we can put our bracket up over it. So I just got done cutting a little bit of the brake line mount cause it's stuck in there. We don't wanna undo it and have to bleed the brake. So I just cut a little bit out. Got to finish breaking the air off and then the brake line will move out of our way so we don't melt it. Hmm, that nose growth, you saw that? Don't make me take you down in front of the cameras. So there's that little piece. So now, Ba -ba! Oh. Wire that up and we should be golden. So I'm gonna bolt this here so it doesn't wanna move while I weld it. So I've already welded underneath. I've ground my little weld down. I just need to tighten this little bad boy. I'm gonna put a tack in a couple spots. We'll pull this out, we'll make sure the big bolt goes all the way through it and we're gonna weld this in solid. All right, we got this all finished. This side is welded. I just need to weld the bracket on the housing now. All right, we gotta, we gotta twist this in. Take your jam nut back. We're getting this upper link in now that it's welded and cooled. Why is this being a butt? I don't know, but I can't get my bolt load in now. Serious? I think it's the angle that's just... It's just, just the angle of your dangle. There, there. Willie's bolt off, there you go. Look, I got a universal hammer. I got mine bolted. We got washers. And then I'm gonna make sure, so I'll take the slack out of this. Okay, so right there. Okay, now look. No axle movement. I'm pretty pumped with that. He's got this bracket all in. Now he's gonna take this upper out. That bolt is not long enough. Oh, remember, didn't we have to shorten it or something? So, uh -huh. it can so now we can put the correct length bolt in it. Uh-huh. Okay, I'm gonna get this upper link on the driver's side removed. Crap, Ola. I must have tightened this down. <clears throat> that baby ain't moving. Teamwork makes the dream work. Ta-da! When monkeys tighten things, they don't come loose. That's all I gotta say about that. <laughs> Darn Skippy! You wanna use the crescent wrench in my pocket? Whoa, you, you keep that in your back pocket? <laughs> Tap it. Not that! Tap the crescent wrench. Give it a quick jolt. There. You said tap it. Everyone's just been concerned about you. Steve has been I'm anyway. alive. I'm just busy. He's busy. So he's here, but he's busy. That's Hillbilly's Papa. Papa in law. <laughs> okay, so now I'm going to cut the driver's side bracket and to move them. Bada bing, bada boom. What I've done is I went measured from this corner, which is the closest to center, to the center mark. That's four inches right there. And then I measured four inches over here, and that's that black line. So the inner corner, so it's gonna kind of come like this on a diagonal, and shoot that direction. All right, that is virtually perfect. So it's gonna seem like it's a little bit off because the height is a little bit different. So if you look at it right here, it's just up a little bit. That's because it's on the upside of this. But you know what? That's perfect enough. All right, so what we're doing, we're compressing the strut, and we're, that'll be at full droop, and this will be at full bump. We just want to make sure that this isn't going to hit. This pinion angle stays the same. That compresses. Look at that. Our upper is level. <laughs> At full bump, they're both level. So we got a grease circ here that needs to be on the bottom. 
We've got a grease circle on the bottom that needs to be at the top. Other than that, this is fully clearing. So let's pull it down. Let's take that out and get it welded. Uh, we're done with the passenger side, so I want to bolt the tire on. Look, good tires on the front. Last one. That tire is expertly installed. Okay, now that we're done moving the link, everything on the front end, I'm gonna start tightening down all of the link. <laughs> you know, you don't have to put it in straight, but it helps. <laughs> it does help. When you get it to go in straight, it allows for things to happen. So we'll have Hillbilly tighten up all these bolts and the jammy nuts. But I want to check one final time. So the whole vehicle. Yeah. All it's doing. That's not even flexing at no. all, but the whole thing. Moving the whole thing. So that is how you fix geometry. What's geometry? Angle. Oh, I didn't graduate high school, so I didn't... I didn't even... You're not supposed to tell everybody, Hillbilly. I didn't even uh, get saying. out of algebra. Look at that. It's exactly what we planned on. Legitimately perfect. Brake line will go right here. Boom. It's going to run right up that arm. Look at how sick that looks. Like it was supposed to be there. I'm, I'm super excited. I'm tired, so you can't tell, but the front end is done. Like... And I think it's done good. We have the correct geometry. The axle does not move. The entire vehicle does. Before you could go dun 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 dun. So trial by error. We've learned, but it's late. We're tired. We're going home. So it is tomorrow. All right. It is the next day. Hillbilly is over working on rewiring the, the lights. They mentioned something about we can take it for a cruise. Not rewiring. Wiring. No. Why not rewiring wiring. wiring sorry but anyways they said something about taking for a cruise so i jumped right on that i'm gonna get these back tires off so we can get the other ones on there we're gonna go for a drive okay i got eight lug nuts i gotta pull off and then we're switching to the big tires <laughs> nascar baby okay so i've been wiring up these baja design lights because last time i don't know if you remember when we installed them we didn't have time to hook them up because we was ready to go play. Go try test it out and see if it was gonna hold and it broke. So now that it's not broke and we're fixing it, we're fixing it all the way. So I got the lights, uh, the wiring harness built for the lights. Got to plug them in. These two are for my little blinkers and that one's my ground. And then that one goes to this light. This one comes to this light. That one goes to that plug. So now I just gotta get it routed into the harness again. Not harness, what is that called? Wire loom. Okay, we almost got the wires ready to be plugged into the lights. I'm just doing this wire loom. On this one, Hillbilly got his side all done. And then we're gonna do some testing. So we got the harness put inside the wire loom. Now we're doing something dumb. We probably should test it before we uh, got it all zip tied, but I only have like two zip ties left. So just hoping for the best. And the whole reason I was changed, I changed the whole harness is because this morning, before anyone got here, I just turned and wired up the Baja design lights and the one on the driver's side worked like it's supposed to. Brights, dims, backlight, which is amber. I'm gonna use it for my running lights. Passenger side, the back amber light worked. Brights would kind of flip, would be really like flickering real bad, but the dims did not work. It wasn't pushing enough amperage, so I replaced the wiring harness all the way to the plug and replace the plug with a newer plug. So now if it's still doing the same thing, it's from the plug into the dash, which that won't be hard to do. If anything, I can put it on a toggle switch if needed, but time to test. Both ambers are on. Nope, you don't got the, you got the outers, but not the lower two on this side, passenger side. It's still doing the flickering. There, now they're on. That's how it should be. Come look. That's double tap. I can't. That's double tapped. You're holding both? Yeah. Okay, so now they're off. Brights are on, but they're not as bright as this side. But yeah, the lowers are on now, but they're bright. But the din the brights aren't very bright. We we think we found the problem where this wiring from this light tees into with this light and then runs up. And since this is a shorter wire, we think this one's pulling all the power and what it's not using is getting transferred to this light, which is not enough to power it on. So there's only one way to test that. 
We'll have Colton hit the switch and I'll read the bolts that's coming off that light. Should be 12, but we never know. Okay, so with the lights on, this plug right here is getting 11.2 volts. With one light plugged in and reading it, we're only getting nine point, like 9.8 volts. One light's getting the 11, and then the other light that's the last light is only getting nine volts. So that's why it's not getting the full power. So we have both lights unplugged and I'm gonna hook in the passenger light. That was one that was having, it's not getting the power it needs. And it might change because the battery might just be a little down a little bit. So it, there's a very good possibility it'll change and they'll work the way they're supposed to when it started. Because the alternator I think puts out more amperage than what the battery does. Well, it'd have to to charge the battery. So we'll check that here in a little bit. So we'll just get the, uh, turn the lights off and we will finish doing tires. We're gonna lift it up, put the other front tire on, and then we'll come around to the back. We're gonna throw the jack stands underneath. I have these ones all loose. I just gotta pull it off. Hard one-handed. One second. Boom. It's off. Okay, so Hillbilly went to go get an air filter. He pulled this one out. It's like, dude, we can't run that. It's dirty. So he went to go get that. And I was like, I'm not just gonna stand around. So I'm gonna hurry and get the wheels on. I started lifting the Bronxar up because I don't want to pick up that tire by myself. And so I'm gonna get it up high enough to where I can just kind of barely lift it on, wiggle it on, put the front tire on, set the jack stands down as high as they go. I'll slowly let the arms down. I'll get the rear tires on. Gotta undo the lug nuts first. I think that's pretty close. Got it on, I'm gonna throw a lug nut on there. Okay, so I was trying to do it by myself, but you know. Daddy's home. Woo! All right, so Colton's been busting his butt getting the tires on. Um, I'm gonna help him get the two rears back on, but we have to manipulate the lift. The Bronx Star is just a little bit too skewampus for everything. So we're gonna set it down on jack stands. Bobby's right here. Move our arms in, get our two tires on, and lift it back up and get the jack stands out. So we keep putting old Whiskers roof off. One of these days, we're gonna get Whiskers roof finished. But that day is not seeming like today. Sorry, Whiskers. Okay, you are on the jack stands. All right, so we'll get these bolted on. All right, so we may have ran into a little bit of an issue. It's my fault. I got hey, away. No, no, no. <laughs> Stop trying to take the blame before you're even blamed. So when you have locking hubs, you have no cap. So this one needs to, <laughs> get it? No cap. That's what my 13 year old would say. So this is gonna be the left front wheel. So we're gonna pull that one off, put that one on the right rear, this one on the left front. We'll get it all recombobulated and we'll be fine. Everything's gonna be fine. Colton, you're fine. I'm fine, but God, I got ahead of myself. But it looks good. Yep, that's the reason. You can't lock the hubs in and out. I figured if I put this one on, I wouldn't have to get out and lock the hubs. So I couldn't make that mistake. <laughs> okay, let's get the sucker on the ground. So that right there might be one of the problems with having why it running really, really rich. That's very oil soaked and dirt. And that's what it's supposed to look like. It'll be okay. <laughs> so do you run a marathon or what? Always. <laughs> Hit it. Once you turn it on, we should get 13.9 volts. So it should charge up enough. I just think that- That's what we're hoping. Here. If not, then I'm gonna have to get a relay and wire the relay in going out so it's continuous power to both ones. That's probably, oh, that's probably why they use relays. Probably, that's probably why Whiskers is having issues too. With that, the would make total, that would make total sense. Oh! So this is our nitrogen bottle. For those of you that weren't with us when we aired up these ORIs before, this is our ORI filling station. So we're gonna fill the tops with like 200 PSI. All right, we're gonna equalize. I'm gonna go one line past 200, so that's gonna be 225. Boom! Okay, tell me when this one's at four inches. More. More. Right, there's four. All right, so we're having an issue getting this thing started, but I think we figured out what was wrong with it. So we had a broken wire on the coil. All right, so I've got the wire all fixed. Let's see if it'll start up. <laughs> Sound like it's firing. Cut it off. We're gonna check the fronts, hurry and get them set and go for a little test drive. So we got 100 pounds in the lowers and 300 pounds in the uppers, looking on, on the old YouTube. So it said the lower on the bottom, the nicer it rides. So we're just gonna go with that. 
We're sitting right at four inches of chrome. All right, I think we're going on a year since this bad boy has driven on its own. And now it has full hydraulic and it still has a Ford engine, but it has four link that works. So we're gonna go for a little joy ride and see how it does. Fire me up! So we took it for its first drive and it at least drove. Not very well, but it did. Basically feels like it's running on half the engine. So hopefully we figured it out before we leave for King of Hammers. So it is tomorrow. What do you know? It is the next day and guess what? I'm back in the booth. So my painter, he's sick because we got something fierce going around everywhere. My kids have all been sick. That's why Demery hasn't been in the video. She's been home taking care of them. She hasn't been in the video, has she? We're gonna get this. White Chevy that we fixed, we're getting that sprayed. So that's cool, we're gonna show you guys that. So I went and mixed up some bumper sealer. We're gonna get that put on right now, and then we'll mix up some normal sealer, get everything sealed, then we're gonna base, then we're gonna clear, then we're gonna go work on the bronc turd. But first, let's blow tack and static this and get our sealer down. All right, let's go, we'll let this sit. This is my bumper sealer that has adhesive promoter properties in it. So it goes right down to bare plastic. But let's go mix up our metal sealer. We'll get the hood, the fender, and the two cab corners all sealed up. All right, so the cool thing about sealing two different white jobs is I only need to mix up one batch of white sealer. So this is a G1 on the grayscale. So it's completely white. It's not actually gray. You go from white to dark gray. So G1 through G8 for you that want to know the technicalities. We'll get this mixed up, get it thrown to the gun. I'm gonna blow tack and static the fender, the hood, and the two cap corners, and then we have to etch it. Now the etch has to sit for 15 minutes, so I'm gonna hurry and just do that, and then we'll come back in and get it all sealed. All right, we'll let that sit for 15. We'll be back in to seal it. Working on that white Chevy that we had to do the complete bedside, inner and outer structure, and Robbie done the bodywork on the cab. Getting the bumper put together. I got the tailgate put together yesterday. I got the bed put together yesterday. Trying to get as much as we can put together so that way when the truck is painted and cured, we can just set it right on there and just work, worry about the body only. Makes the process a little bit faster, and we're not just sitting around waiting for everything to be painted and then do it, so. I know you can't tell, but it's been 15 minutes, so let's get the sealer down. All right, we got this all sealed. Now we gotta let it sit. Another 15 minutes. All right, so we've got my water-based paint, and we've got some solvent-based paint to do the expedition, or explore, or whatever it is, I don't know. Anyway, I'm gonna get my first coat down on everything. This is gonna be a process. So you might be in here a little bit more than normal. I've gotta put two coats of base, then two coats of mid coat, two coats of base on the white stuff over here and then clear coat. So we got a lot to do. All right, we go pretty light on the first coat. Let that air dry out. Let's grab our solvent base. And let's get everything based out over here. All right, so we got our first coat of base on all the white. Now this is solvent base, so it's gonna sit for eight minutes. We'll put a second coat on it, and this will be done. Ready for clear. Now with water, you gotta dehydrate all of the water out of it, or it'll delaminate. So it's a really big deal. Air blowers are your best friends. Dried by air movement, not by chemical evaporation. That's our second coat. All right, so we're gonna blow tack and static all this. Get our second coat on. This is why you tack everything. All right, we're gonna let this sit. I'm gonna go get some mid coat and we'll be back to mid coat in here in just a second. Okay, so I got the bumper all assembled. Now we're just waiting for the truck to be finished, painted, and cured. So till then, we're gonna put the bumper over here and the tailgate over here, just so it's not getting bumped and scratched or none of that stuff. So moving it out of the way so it can't happen. Looks good, Hill Blueski. There, I gave him a virtual internet pad on the back. 
For you guys. Hey, I want a cookie. Oh, he wants cookies. What kind of cookie do you like? Snickerdoodle. Or Hillbilly likes yeah, snickerdoodles. So yeah, you can't see any gray. Maybe while we got him in here, he can tell us a ghost story. <laughs> One looks good, so I'm looking for my blend. Looking for a nice seamless transition. Looking through my base. So up here is where I'm really concerned. Making sure there's no gray from primer. We're gonna blow tack and static this and get our mid coat down. We're doing two coats of mid. All right, we'll get this all dehydrated, get our second coat on. Now I'm gonna do what's called a dust coat and you're gonna see why it's a dust coat. What we're doing here is I'm controlling the metallics. So you back the pressure down, you back your gun up and you dust it. It's called a control coat, not a dust coat. That's gonna allow the metallics to orientate, orientate correctly. Box this mix. So I am using Easty 530, it's a PPG Enviro Base Clear. We're gonna get everything cleared up. So we put our clear in it, and we're gonna put our hardener and then our reducer. And we'll go in and we'll lay this gloss sauce down. All right, let's get this blow tack and static and we're gonna put down the gloss sauce. All right, we've got it all blow tack and static. Let's get this gloss sauce on. So I'm gonna start on this side. All right, I'm gonna go out and mix some more clear, come back in and get a second coat on. Once that's on, I'll show you what it looks like, then we're flipping this sucker on bake. All right, we've got it all cleared up. It's lunch time, so I'm gonna head out to lunch. I'll hurry and show you what this looks like, and then we'll be back to hopefully get the bronc turd to run. So, trying to figure out what was going on, why it's, when it gets warm and you put it under a load, it only runs on like two cylinders. I was racking my brain all night, researching a bunch of stuff. This morning I remembered Robbie had an old scanner that has def uh, different attachments. And I was lucky enough that it had the attachment I need for the OBD one reader for Ford. So I, went, I go to scan the codes and it says, no data stored in tool. Use desired function from menu before reviewing. So there's no code stored in this tool. Well, I think we should just finish the spark plugs first. The old ones look like garbage. It's like they came out of a trash can. None of them. None of them are gapped the same. They're all fouled. They're all black. That one's maybe not fouled. That one's definitely fouled. If this thing doesn't run, we're not taking it to California. I'll spend a weekend getting it. I'm just putting the spark plug wires back on my side. So basically the only thing we've done... The only thing we haven't changed with timing is the distributor itself. Yeah. We're going to try to... Try to see if it's simple. If it's just a simple set of spark plugs. And a coil, maybe. Hold on. Will we be able to? Will it run with the intake off? I mean, the. Yeah. We're just gonna start. Try to start it and see what it does. It may not do anything, and it may run better. <laughs> Sounds a lot better. You think it was like backfiring once, but. I don't know. I think maybe you ought to clear everything off and let's go try driving it again. We'll see. That's the real test. Awesome fingers. So I'm not 100% sure how accurate the fuel gauge is. It says we're about a quarter-ish. So to be safe, I'm just going to visually look at the fluid to see where it's at. <clears throat> just ask it. Hey! Hello! Looks about a quarter. I'll turn the key on cycle the pump to see if it's flowing back into the tank. And if it's not, then that tells me right there that the fuel pressure regulator is bad. Okay, let's see if the fuel pressure regulator is working. It's barely working. I don't know exactly how much it's supposed to work, but at least it's working. So let's stick that outside so we don't have to smell it no more. Do you want to just pour it back in? Not with that sugar in there. It will help it, dude. No. Sugar and gasoline. It's not a good mixture with the motor. You guys can see it. All right, let's go test drive this. All right, so we didn't film the test drive because we didn't do the test drive. 
It seems to me as if this thing is starving for fuel. So Hillbilly's gonna pull the intake plenum off, check all the injectors and see if they're plugged. It's our next move. Cause it, it idles better, but the second it has any form of a load, nothing. Another thing I can do is I'm gonna hook up the fuel pressure gauge, start it and rev it up. What? And so see let's check what it... that first. Okay, so right now I'm gonna just cycle the key and make sure that it is getting up to about 35, 40 PSI in a key on engine off. There's 40. So Hillbilly's gonna start this and rev it up and see what the fuel pressure does. Clear? Mm hmm Oh, again? You're backfiring hard. You dropped to 36 and it never went above 42. Are your spark plug wires on wrong? No. I'll check timing your... <laughs> Wires Something's again. wrong because you shouldn't be popping out of this unless your heads are bad. So first things first, I'm going to release the pressure of the fuel gauge. It's a lot of air. How did it hold pressure of air but not fuel? That makes no sense. So I was just thinking and noticing that when I uh, put suck on this to put vacuum to it, my fuel pressure drops to 30, but as soon as I release, it jumps back up to 35. So there's still a possibility this is bad so i'm going to leave it unplugged i'm going to jump in start it and see if it runs any better at rev up and everything else so we'll have to have colton use his finger and plug this hole so we don't have a vacuum leak <laughs> won't run that not getting it's not opening that up so you're not getting any fuel pressure or you're getting fuel pressure no, well, why does that work? You're gonna get it some fuel? Yeah. <laughs> so I think I found the problem. I'm gonna go tell Robbie. What do you think? Coming from Hell Billy, won't be no better move. So you wanna hear some good news? You decided to get rid of your Ford. Yeah, that'd be bad news. What's the good news? I can rev it to the moon and no popping or backfiring to And we're hitting about 41 PSI now. So I'm thinking that that fuel pressure regulator is, I'm sure it's original from 88. Let's go check it out. And it's been fit for a few years, a couple different times. Let's go. I don't sound any better. I mean, you absolutely, that's absolutely bad, but it still runs like. You know the difference. Runs better with the unplugged. Runs like bull cucky. Okay, so we tested the fuel pressure regulator. It runs better, but it's not, it still doesn't run right. It's still having a fuel issue, so I'm going to take this and take them off. I'm going to take the injectors out, inspect them, clean them, and go from there. But first, we gotta get a vacuum and get all that crud away from the block. Okay, I'm just going through, unloosening all the bolts. We can take this off. I got three on that side. I had one in there I already got. There's a uh, one inside crack there. And that there, so just trying to help Hillbilly out while filming. We're gonna get this done. I also want to check inside there to see if maybe some moisture got in there. And I know you guys will say, well, why didn't you check that before you pulled the plenum off? Well, that's because either way, I was gonna pull the plenum off and clean injectors because this motor has sat for a few years and then ran and then sat a few more years. And this last time that it was, it was sitting, it's been sitting for 10 years. The injectors need to be cleaned. I'll get some Scotch Bright, get this cleaned up, cause that's, looks pretty bad. I can do that. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and clean this. What's this called? Spectre wheel. Spectre wheel? Something. This is the before, and that's the after. Got the injectors all unbolted. So now I'm gonna try popping them free. There Ooh. we go. Fuel in there. Oh, that one's rusted up, that fuel rail. That last one. I see that. There's no, I guarantee that's not getting fuel. Now, to get it to pop out. Get a bearing puller. Just kidding. 
I totally get it, I understand, but I try to be there for him and just kind of, you know, try to have a good attitude all the time. That's my, that's my number one get, get to, is just try to have a good attitude all the time. Stay positive. Oh yeah. <clears throat> Ooh, there it goes. Okay, so the more me and Hillbilly were pulling the injectors out, the more we discovered that they are completely gunked up. Yes, we could go through, we try cleaning all of them, but they're so gunked but up. not that... having the proper cleaning machine. Yeah, and we don't have the proper cleaning machine. So we went down to Napa. We ordered a set. They should be here tomorrow morning. And so we're putting new injectors in it. So now we're going to go through and clean the fuel rails, what he can, and see what he can see of them. We'll go from there. Some of these injectors are big old chunks of rust. I don't know if you guys can see that. But that came out of one of the injectors, and there's been three or four of them that was like that. That's restricting airflow or fuel flow, restricting power. So that right there will solve our issues altogether. Because it's a fuel issue, 100%. Not getting enough. I didn't know, but this thing sat for how many years? Probably about 25 years. It's entire life. <laughs> We're here, there's nothing we can do about it. It's too late. So Hillbilly is gonna do a compression check and just make sure that every cylinder is okay. Check compression in each cylinder, write it down. Then I'll go online, look and see what the compression is supposed to be for this motor. So here we go. 110 PSI. 110. Okay, we're down to our last cylinder to test. Everything's been looking good on the passenger side. 125 PSI on all four cylinders. The driver's side, five and six is 117. Seven is reading 120, so I'm on the last one. I'm gonna screw the little compression test tube in. You guys think might think, well, they're all off. It's not gonna, be, it's, it's bad. No. Cause it could be a valve that's not seating right or, or it has corrosion or not corrosion, but I can't remember what it's called. But a valve could just not be seating cause of it. As long as they're within 10 PSI of spec, they're good. And from what I can find on the old interweb, anything above 90 PSI, to not even worry about it. It's still a good compression if it's above 90. Once you get at 90 or lower, then it's time for a rebuild and that's when you start worrying about it. But we're quite, quite a ways away from 90 PSI, so we're good. All right, hit it. <laughs> Give it a little rev ski. Rev it up. That's good enough. That's all the alternator bearing down. Yeah. Boom! The alternator's about to leave the chat, but here's the situation, guys. So Hillbilly worked his little tushy off all weekend long. We got him eight new injectors, got him in. He detailed his valve covers. And painted them. Yeah, he painted them. They're perfect. We don't have a cooling fan. That's just a luxury. We don't have luxuries. And we need overflow, because every time we shut it off, it... Yeah, we need an overflow. For the most part, and to the good news, this thing's going to King of Hammers. So I threatened to leave it home because I didn't want to be embarrassed by it running so poorly. But it doesn't run poor anymore. It runs as, as good as a Ford can run. Which is better than a Chevy. Whatever you say. <laughs> I'll just agree to disagree. <laughs> the good news is it wasn't a total waste doing all this work, which I just assumed it was going to be. So aside from a fan, this thing's going to be sweet. We're going to go have some fun at King Hammers. We're headed down with the Onyx crew. We're taking the bus. So you're not going to want to miss out on that. Got a few little things, a couple of things to finish up, and we're gonna be hitting the road to King of Hammers. Oh, also right here, Steve filmed over the weekend at, when they went on a test drive. So Corey, put that in here. You guys check it out. They went on a test drive to prove that it actually runs pretty good. As you can see, we're outside. <laughs> well, let's go for a ride, see what it does. So far, so good. Oh yeah! It'd never do that before. It's stumbling. It's 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 yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It's doing extremely better. I can actually hit the gap and go, not just chug. Would you say it's ready for King of the Hammers now? No. Why not? It needs a muffler so we can actually hear and think. And what? Exactly. Okay. All right, so we got the Bronx Star completely ready to go. Well, just about. Well, we've got a few little th odds and ends to do before we can take off, but 
it runs. So I guess that's a plus. So as always, we appreciate you. If you enjoyed this video, go check out this one. I had no clue this thing sat for 150 years.